Welcome back to the Hillbilly RV channel on an absolutely balmy day <laughs> here in southern West Virginia. Actually, it is very warm. I'm about ready to come out of this hoodie. Uh, but we're not going to fool around today. We're going to right into this. Uh, these folks called this morning and said, hey, our furnace quit two days ago and we can't figure it out and don't have time to work on it. So can you help us out? Absolutely. Here I am. So. Uh, I've been here for just a few minutes and I have heard it. The fan came on, but I never heard it try to ignite. So let's get this cover off and see, uh, see if we can figure out what's going on. The awesome thing is it does have the cover so we can, we can get to the furnace. Let's, uh, let's let you listen to it once. Let me, this has the DOT switch, so let me cut it off, cut it back on, and you can hear what it's doing. I believe that'll reset it on this one. No, it won't. I think I can reach back in here and unplug the board where you can't see, nor can I, but I can feel it. I might be able to get it unplugged, but I'm not sure I can get it plugged back up. Let me go get a needle, pair of needle nose pliers. I mean, it kind of sounds like uh, this is a suburban furnace. It kind of acts like the the cell switch could be bad, which we don't see that much of those on suburban. But you know, anything's possible. It is a machine. I think I got it in the right place. Let's see if I got it. <laughs> it would have been way quicker just went inside, cut the thermostat off, cut it back on. This this usually takes like two seconds to unplug and plug that uh, connector. Plus it's got a really long delay. I should have reset it. All right. In order to get into this furnace to check the the cell switch or the board. We're gonna have to get this cover off this squirrel cage fan. So let me go grab some tools. We'll get this thing out of the way. It's got no we gotta take out about about six screws all around that thing. Get that off and then I'll be back. Okay, I got those seven screws out. Let's see see if there's enough slack in these wires to uh, get this cover off. I've snipped this uh, wire tie off. Might have to unplug this cell switch for a minute. That wire is really short. So is the other wire on the cell switch.
I don't know why that fan won't start up now. I'm gonna plug this cell switch back in just for testing purposes. Let me go get a tester and make sure. Maybe I, I pulled that connector off that board and tried to put it on. Maybe I've got it misaligned. I might have popped a fuse somewhere. So let me go. Uh, let me go make sure we got power on this thing. Get my trusty multimeter out. Just catch a ground off the case right here. I believe the blue one and that connector will be our power coming in. That's really hard to probe. Let me see if I can get that board out of there. Would sure help. That would sure help a lot. It should just kind of slip out of there now. Since I've got that cover off, that should release that control board. There we are. Control board on these suburban furnaces actually slips in a slot and then that goes in that slot behind the board and then this cover holds it all together. All these wires are like super short. I don't know why they do that. See if I can figure out whether we have power coming in here first or go any further. Now I can get to this connector. not uncommon when you're working in a bad place like this to actually short something out and uh, pop a fuse so let me go get that fuse replaced so that's going to be inside in the power distribution panel i'm not going to take you inside I guess unplugging and plugging the, because the fuse is fine. Uh, unplugging and plugging that connector on that control board apparently turns the thermostat off, because when I went in, thermostat was off. So I cut it back on and see what we got. I think we're going to stick a board in it real quick uh, just to test. Uh, them wires are like really short So I gotta see if I can get a little more wire Get the old board and the old wires out where I can get them hooked to a new board Well, I'll tell you what I'll try and take y'all along Now let's try not to short anything out The good thing is the, the fuses are just right inside the door there we do happen to pop a fuse. It ain't the end of the world. Let's see if that helped any. Alright, battery died. Had to go change the battery. Yeah, snipping out one more zip tile back in there helped a ton. So let's get this board unplugged. It's be a good time to have a helper. Oh my 
goodness. Boy, sometimes them things come off hard. Broke that one. Right. I don't have my service truck with me. I gotta see if I have a spade connector. Man, sometimes if things just come off so hard. Let me go dig around in my tool bag, see if I can come up with a way to put that connector back on this wire. All right, had to get a little bit creative. I'm just gonna put these two, these two wires are piggybacked uh, with the uh, spade connectors. So I'm just gonna put those two wires together and uh, with a blue butt connector and that should be just fine. Like I say, they, they're piggybacked, they go on the same terminal. So I don't know why, I don't know why this wouldn't work. If I can get both these, I can get both these wires in one side of a, a blue butt connector, which I think I can. I think positive, right? Oh yeah, man, no problem at all. Tug, tug, tug. Then put this one on the other side. Then we can plug back into the board. So I'm gonna try and a dinosaur board first. Cause I'll say we don't see we don't see problems with suburban's uh, cell switches. So <clears throat> I mean I gotta have uh, I mean it should have just took a minute to change the board if uh, if them spade connectors had come off like they should have. And uh, it would have just took me a minute or less to uh, to test the board theory by just changing a putting a good board on it, a, a new board anyway. You assume it's a good one. Put our Sparky on. Put our connector for a board on. Maybe easier said than done. Still short. It's better than it was. Got to turn it over for a dinosaur board. Alright, now I'm going to go in there and ask her to cut the thermostat off and back on so I can hold the cell switch closed because the fan can't close the cell switch because I've got the cover off. All the wires are out of the way. So we can run it like this and test it. got a bad high limit switch in this furnace that thing is buried deep in the back of it I'm pretty sure so that's awesome yeah let me figure out how I'm gonna attack this all right I gotta go inside and hopefully I can just get the panel off the back of that furnace and I'll be able to get to that 
limit switch. I hope the furnace ha doesn't have to come out and be completely disassembled. So, uh, so yeah, I'm going inside. I'm not taking you in there because there's a little puppy in there that's highly excitable and you wouldn't be able to hear anything anyway. So let me get to the access. All I'm going to do is uh, probably just pull the pull the contacts off of that high limit switch. It has two male spade connectors on it and ohm across it. And I, I expect it's open. That's what it acts like. And then I got to see if I have a high limit switch for a Suburban SF30 SF30 FQ. So, Y'all hang tight. Stay warm. I'll be right back. Alright, so I gained access to the back of the furnace. I pulled the connectors off the uh, high limit switch. And it's not uncommon when you do that for the stupid thing to work. Uh, I'm going to see if I got one. We're definitely going to replace it. I don't know if the... I'll show it to you here in a minute. I don't know if the little tabs get loose or what. Get a bad connection. But that's not uncommon. If you touch that thing, it'll work. But we're not going to leave it like that. Unless I just absolutely don't have a part. I don't know what we're going to do. Here is that high limit switch. Um, it just has wire goes on each side and if the furnace gets too hot this will open which cuts the flame off and then when it cools back down it closes flame comes back on it's not uncommon for furnaces especially nowadays to to do that quite a bit they'll heat up get too hot cut off flame will be off for you know a minute minute and a half come back on most people don't even realize it's doing it but yeah it's, it's somewhat of a common parts failure so I had one, so we changed it. Let me get this thing hooked back up temporarily here. Uh, so we test it. Okay, I, I know that uh, working on that furnace um, may not have made any sense to you. Um, and I just, it was not the time or place to try and go over that. So let me go over it now, um, try to explain this wiring a little bit to you and how I knew what was what, okay? The, uh, out of the RV, you got your positive and your negative. Uh, negative just goes to a, a bus bar on the, uh, on the furnace. Your positive comes all around town, comes to the 12 volt on the board. That was those two wires that were piggybacked and I broke one of those spade connectors trying to get it apart. And that's why I put those two wires together and put them on the board. Uh, the other spade connector there just goes to the power of the fan motor, okay? We're not even gonna talk about that because that just doesn't matter right now. Um, so that, that 12 volt comes in from the RV to the board on that 12 volt positive post. The other side of that wire goes over to power the thermostat on the positive side of the thermostat. All right, now this is the connector that connects on that board. It's about a six pin connector, but they only use four wires on this particular furnace anyway. Uh, here it is blown up right here. Uh, we've got the red wire, blue wire, brown wire, and a yellow wire. The yellow wire is a ground. The uh, brown wire goes to the gas valve. We don't even need to talk about that. The blue wire comes over and ties in on the other side of the thermostat, the other thermostat wire, and then it goes through your cell switch and through your high limit switch back around to the board on the red. Actually, I think it moves the other direction. I think it, I think it leaves I think it leaves the board, the control board, on the red wire, 
goes through your high limit switch is what we had that was bad, okay? Our high limit switch was open, so the, the electricity stopped right there. So it never even made it to the cell switch. So that's why uh, the cell switch and the high limit switch are always just in the same series, you know, the same wire, the same series, one and any other. So if one fails, um, like that one, the high limit switch failed, so we never got power to the cell switch at all. Now, if the cell switch were bad, we would have power coming out of the high limit switch to one side of the cell switch, but then it wasn't wouldn't come out the other side. So that's why that's why I get my multimeter out and I start checking this stuff. So um, the the old board, the original board, acted um, acted like it was a cell switch because it would the fan would come on, it would run for like 10 seconds, shut off. All right, that's because these two switches are are wired in series. So it'll act the same whether it's the high limit switch or the cell switch. So I knew it was one, and as soon as I got my meter out and started checking, seeing that we never got power to the cell switch, then I knew it was the high limit switch. So that's where I went to fix this thing. Um, so, so yeah, does that make sense? Um, because once it leaves the, the, if the high limit switch is closed, the cell switch is satisfied, it means the fan is turning the correct speed, then that power will continue on to the blue wire on our connector at our board, and it will also go to the other side of the thermostat, the other thermostat wire. Okay? Now some systems, if you have a Coleman air conditioner, a lot of times you don't have this here. Okay, I don't know how but Coleman can do without it, <laughs> but uh, yeah, does that, does, that, does that clear up the, the furnace issues? Any, I hope. Uh, I'm a terrible artist. I got a fuzzy picture from off the internet to get this, uh, to, get this to, to draw it out for you. So um, hopefully that makes sense. Does that make sense? All right, let's carry on. Okay. Um, you heard me test it with the, the dinosaur board and then I gave them the option to keep that dinosaur board and they said no so I put their old board in there it works fine everything works fine I just need to put this thing back together and uh, we'll be done so uh, y'all get fine get down in that comment section leave me a comment criticism concern we will catch you on the next one